Hi, I'm Larry McRae. And we're about halfway up the uh, Sledgehammer Trail. Sledgehammer is the original hammer trail. This is the birthplace of rock crawling, right where we're standing. Uh, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, the Victor Valley Four Wheelers kind of hiked this canyon and decided this might be doable in, in the Jeeps of the day, which were you know, maybe one or two lockers, 33 inch tires. Uh, and they spent a few weeks stacking rocks, breaking rocks down, and making this uh, what seemed to be impassable canyon passable. And when they got to the top of the trail, uh, one of the members commented to the other, it looked like a, somebody had beat their Jeep with a sledgehammer. So the hammer theme began right here. Uh, the next trail was jackhammer, then wrecking ball, then claw hammer, and, and all the uh, hammer trails that you know of were, were based off of uh, uh, this trail. Some of the uh, original club members that I know were uh, Fuzzy, who's no longer with us, and Chuck Shaner, who's still a really active uh, Victor Valley club member. Uh, we call him the godfather of rock crawling. I think without him and his vision, there wouldn't be the sport of rock crawling. Uh, this trail is actually the very first rock crawling trail I ever did. I came here with a group of friends that uh, thought that I was ready, I guess, and uh, we got to the first Z-turn and I thought, they're crazy. I thought, this must be the end of the trail. There's no way we're actually going up that. And I don't know, eight, ten hours later, we were at the top. So they made me a believer. Uh, from that moment on, I was hooked and uh, been coming back as regular as I can ever since. So as I'm driving up this trail in my race buggy, I keep looking in my mirrors and I see that wraith right on my tail. Uh, looks like they were making just as easy work of this trail as I was in the uh, full-scale racer. So uh, I think we might, I don't know if we'll actually trade, but I think I want to grab the controls of that thing for a little bit and see how I do on this trail. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I know that uh, most of the RC guys and us one-to-one -one guys love stickers. Uh, you know, I'm very proud of the parts that are on my car and, and I typically will run the sticker of the guys, uh, parts who I'm running. But uh, this car has our race sponsors on here. Every single sticker on this car uh, is a part that we run and a, and a company that we support because we're proud of their product and support their product and they support us in this race program. So every one of these has a purpose and I'll try to uh, maybe go over what each one of these parts does and then how important it is to, uh, to competing in a race like King of the Hammers. We were in a pretty fortunate position where we were able to, to get some pretty cool sponsors, but one of the things that stuck with me over the years is what uh, John Nelson told me, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, is, is if you wouldn't pay full retail for the part, don't accept the sponsorship. So every part on this car is a part that I would go out, it's the best that I could possibly think of for this particular application. So uh, to finish a race like the King of the Hammers, you've got to have the best rock crawling tire, and that's by far uh, the BF Goodrich tires. Uh, you know, heat is a big issue, of course, in this race, and Griffin has got the best cooling products out there, uh, and you can even actually see the radiator in the wrap, which is actually pretty cool. Unfortunately for us, we uh, finished the race after dark, but fortunately for us, we had the rigid lights on there, so it turned night into day for us for the last uh, hour of our race. Uh, the shock package we had uh, was probably, bar none, the best we could possibly run. Uh, we were limited in shock size and travel because this car was built for the modified class, but even with those uh, travel limitations and uh, shock body limitations, we were able to keep up in the desert and actually kind of hold our own uh, because of the shock package that uh, Fox had provided us. And one of the things that you don't really think about, but it's a very expensive part of racing, is rod ends. Uh, if you have rod ends that uh, are inexpensive, they're probably not going to make it through the race. And if you have uh, very expensive rod ends, you probably want to maintain them a couple times a season. So we were pretty fortunate in that uh, FK uh, rod ends stepped up this year and has helped us out and have always helped us out actually in our race program. It's one of those things that uh, uh, it's often overlooked but uh, can make the difference between finishing a race and not finishing a race. Uh, we also switched over to aluminum links this year. Uh, from Rock Crawler. We tried every heat treated chromoly tube size, tube diameter, thickness, uh, just could not make them live until we got the uh, new aluminum Rock Crawler arm, so uh, we definitely appreciate that. And we beat the snot out of, the, out of these wheels in this race. I mean, you're hitting rocks at speed and have never had an issue with our trail ready beadlock, so it's another one of those things that uh, you've really got to think about before you, uh, before you try a race like King of the Hammers. Another thing that uh, takes a lot of abuse in a race like this is the drivetrain. Uh, we've got some of the very best drivetrain parts. We've got uh, JE Real Drive Shafts, which have never let us down. Uh, we actually had a low pinion 9 inch in the back of this car the first season, and, and we were literally using that drive shaft as a screw <laughs> to propel us forward and never had any issues. And, uh, it's one of the
one of the reasons that we faithfully use the JE Real Drive Shaft. The Curry family is not only active in the race, in other words, they're, they're actually racing this race. Uh, Casey has raced and John has both, have both raced. Uh, but they have developed parts specifically for this kind of, of, of wheeling. It's uh, a lot more brutal than just coming through the trail at uh, normal speeds. So they developed a high pinion uh, Rock Jock 70 for the rear end, full float. It's got an adjustable uh, load bolt for the pinion. Never have to worry about a uh, ring gear failure with a high pinion. It's got a 10 and a half inch ring gear. One of the best improvements we made in this car from last year to this year. Uh, and I really appreciate them uh, constantly developing the, uh, their drivetrain parts for this kind of race. Uh, with that 10 and a half inch ring gear, we've been using Motive all, you know, for our whole racing career. Never had a ring gear failure. Uh, a lot of it is because of uh, the quality parts that uh, Motive has provided. We're in the car, unfortunately, a lot of hours. Uh, you know, the better, the faster you are, the quicker you get through. But uh, we've been in the car as much as 12 hours at a time in some of the desert races and uh, in some of the previous King of the Hammers races. So fatigue's a big part of, uh, of, of the game. So having a comfortable seat is, is very important. And the Mastercraft has provided us with some of the most comfortable seats and harnesses that, uh, that's, that's available on the market today. One of the things that Shad, my co-driver and general manager, talked me into doing this year or with this car was uh, having it professionally wired. Uh, American Wiring Harness does nothing but wire race cars. Uh, all military spec parts, uh, so it's one of the things we don't have to worry about. Shad and I went to a lot of races before we built this car, and uh, most of the mechanical issues were related to wiring. If it was an overheating issue, it was because the fan failed because the wiring wasn't correct. If it was a fuel pickup issue, it was because the fuel pump wasn't wired correctly and there was an issue. So. Uh, it seems silly to spend $15,000 to, to get to a race and have a, an inexpensive wiring job keep you from finishing or, or, or winning. So uh, we did spend the money on a professional wiring job. It's one of those things we've never had to worry about. We've got a schematic. If there is an issue in the field, we pull the schematic out and we can fix it right there. So uh, one of the things I'm very happy Shad talked me into and, and we'll never have to worry about again. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet and one of the smartest guys you'll ever meet is Jack from uh, CTM. Jack was one of the guys who was just out here wheeling with us, you know, 15, 20 years ago and, and saw a problem and, and came up with a solution. U-joint breakage were a big part of making these trails and, you know, you had to carry spare shafts and spare U-joints and this U-joint would break and take the shaft out. Uh, you know, there were some uh, higher alloy or higher grade alloy axles, but you still had the weak U-joints. So Jack came up with the uh, 300M cryo-treated U-joints uh, that made uh, even a 44 last on these kind of trails and made a 60 almost uh, unbreakable. So uh, it's one of the advancements that this sport has uh, brought to the, the industry that's kind of trickled down to, to the consumer, which, uh, which is me. When we first started crawling on these trails, uh, you know, you could possibly do it with an open front end, but it was a struggle. Uh, so the first set of lockers I put in my Jeep were De Detroit lockers from Eaton. And it's the same lockers that I run in this race car. They're always on, you never have to think about them. Uh, the beauty of a Detroit locker in the front is that it differentiates a little bit so you can make these turns. You don't have to remember to turn them on or off. There's no uh, failures uh, from other systems that uh, keep your locker from working. So in our race car, the reliability of the uh, Detroit locker is very important to us. Uh, one of the things that you don't think about is uh, batteries. Uh, we were able to, to work with Odyssey and use a very small package uh, because packaging is everything in these race cars with a lot of amperage. So we've got the same battery we've started our racing season a year and a half ago in this car. No issues, still takes a charge, still runs great. Uh, one of the coolest improvements we made in this car, uh, packaging wise and uh, reliability wise. To compete in the modified class, we had to have a mechanical steering system, which is kind of unusual in this type of racing. We had an idea, we called Tom from PSC, and he said that uh, he was kind of working on the same thing. So he sent me a box full of stuff and said, try this. And after uh, a little bit of trial and error, I think we perfected a, uh, a modified class steering system. And one of the parts you just don't race King of the Hammers without, or even Rock Crawl without, is the, uh, the Advanced Adapters Atlas Transfer Case. Uh, it was developed, I think, in the late 90s, early 2000s for Rock Crawl because of this canyon. Uh, and the sport has evolved so much since then, but so has the, uh, the transfer case. Advanced Adapters has gone through the trouble of developing this to run in high range for 185 miles with high horsepower motors. Uh, it's one of those companies that is constantly trying to stay ahead of the curve, and, uh, and we've never broke a transfer case. So, uh, and, and it's one of those things that uh, somebody 
found an interesting uh, byproduct of this uh, transfer case. You can engage and disengage uh, each axle independently. And the first time I saw somebody do a front burn uh, with an Atlas transfer case in competition, I was blown away. I thought, that's brilliant. And it changed the sport. Changed the sport of technical rock climbing for sure. Uh, and again, it's uh, every trail rig I have, the race car, everything I own is always an Atlas transfer case. Another one of the logos you'll see on your Wraith, and it's actually on my race car, is patent steel. Uh, this chassis is all chrome alley. It allowed us to use some thinner wall in some of the spots where you normally would have to use thick wall. And, and it's probably given me the, that comfort that I know that I could uh, uh, wreck this thing at speed and ho hopefully survive. So having a good steel from a good company is a very important part of this, uh, this chassis. And thank you, Patents, for, uh, for helping us out with this one. One of the things that differs from about rock racing than from rock crawling was that in rock crawling you didn't really need to have a motor. Uh, all it had to be is reliable and gearing did everything else. Uh, when the sport started evolving towards rock racing, the motors became boring, very important. We started shopping for a motor. The most important thing to most people was horsepower, but to me it was reliability. Uh, I wanted a motor that I can run all season without having to worry about breaking the, the, the car down, taking it out, having it rebuilt. And we went to turnkey for this. And this motor's been in the car for, I don't know, maybe two or 3,000 race miles for a season and a half with no issues. So it was a smart choice. Uh, they've worked with us through the, uh, the whole program. We've dynoed it a few times. Uh, they've actually, we've had some things we wanted to change about the, uh, the settings in the, uh, in the ECM and they did that for us and the thing just works, it works better every time we take it out. All that horsepower is useless if it doesn't sound good. <laughs> Magnaflow has provided us with a pretty cool system that sounds good. But more importantly, we took a car to them with a motor in it that was very tight and said, figure out a way to make some headers work in here. They custom built us a set of headers that wrapped through the, the chassis and came out, uh, looks like artwork and uh, sounds even better. So uh, Magnaflow is a company that, again, we have it on all of our personal cars, but uh, also have it on our race car. It's uh, some of the best sounding exhaust, uh, I think, on the market today. One of the questions I get asked most often is, what the hell is the cartel? Well, the cartel is this little Asian guy. And if that's not enough explanation for you, just Google the cartel and see what you come up with. The biggest name on the door, of course, is Poison Spider. That's the company that, uh, that I'm pretty proud of. Uh, Poison Spider builds armor, and the armor that we design is built for this kind of terrain. Uh, it just kind of made sense for us to use this uh, King of the Hammers race. It's kind of an R&D platform uh, and, a, and a good way for the, the crew just to, uh, to let loose. I mean, it's, it's kind of a team building uh, process that we all enjoy. Uh, this car was built all in-house, uh, designed in-house and put together in-house. Uh, Shad Kennedy, who is my co-driver but also our general manager, is a big part of this car. And Without him, uh, this whole program, we wouldn't have this race program without Shad. Uh, you might have heard some noise in the background. There's a, a, a rig in front of us that broke down on the trail, and he's actually up there fixing that car while we're doing the, uh, the video. So uh, the hardest working guy you'll ever meet. Uh, great desert racer, great co-pilot because uh, he knows when to tell me to go fast and when to slow me back down. But you'll also see his sticker on here. So I wanted, wanted to explain who he was and, uh, and how big a part he was of the team. Uh, the other name you see on the door is, uh, is Axial. This has been a partnership for the last two or three years that's been fantastic. Uh, you know, everybody on our crew and everybody I go wheeling with uh, at lunchtime pulls out the RC cars and starts playing on the trail. Uh, it started out as something for the kids to do, but I think it's grown into something that all, we all do. Uh, we're fighting the kids to get the cars, so we all had to get our own cars now. So uh, at lunch breaks, you'll see the race come out and we'll all uh, start uh, having our little mini rock crawling competition. So uh, I love the partnership. and. Enjoy the, the product uh, and look forward to see what they come up with next.